it is in your very best interest to educate yourself on your body and your health and what you're putting in your body and um, what you're putting on your body and the practices that you're doing that affect your body because that inherently affects your mind and it affects your soul. And this body is where your beautiful self is living for this time period in this world. You're listening to the Almost 30 Podcast, a lifestyle podcast hosted by Krista Williams and Lindsay Simsek. Tune in for a new episode every Tuesday to hear our honest conversations about topics like wellness, entrepreneurship, spirituality, and self-development with guests who are really smart, really inspirational, and really fucking funny. (laughs) It's real, it's raw, and it's unfiltered. Inspired by our transition from our 20s to our 30s, we realized it's so much more than that. Our mission is to provide you with the tools, guidance, and motivation to help you navigate any transitions in your life and propel your personal growth. Thanks so much for tuning in to the Almost 30 Podcast. Here we go. Hey. Hey, everyone. Welcome back to the podcast. Thanks for joining us. Thanks for joining us. If you're new to the pod, uh, I am Lindsay Simsek and... This is Krista Williams. Hi, I'm Krista. Nice to meet you. Maybe you're just listening to podcasts for the first time. Podcasts. In the new year. And we're just happy you're here. We are a podcast all about helping you navigate life's transitions. You know, it was inspired by our transition from our 20s to our 30s, but you have inspired us to talk about so much more than that. And our conversations range from relationships to entrepreneurship, to health and wellness, to spirituality, to sexuality. And we are just honored to kind of just have these conversations. We're not experts. We're learning right along with you. Yeah, we're not experts. We're not experts. I'm not an expert. That's I'm here. a guru though. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so excited this week. I am bringing you guys along to talk about my hormone health journey. So, um, in the Facebook group and then in DMs and, you know, anytime I'm with you guys, uh, it seems to be a really popular topic among, you know, the women that we're, that we're interacting with, um, especially as people are exploring other options outside of birth control or, you know, really thinking about our hormone health as it relates to our overall health. So I wanted to bring you guys along with some of the struggles that I've had related to, you know, my hormones in the past couple years um, and how I was able to balance my hormones naturally. And I'm kind of in the process. So following your lead, truly. And um, most recently, and I've shared this on social media. So if you follow me there, you probably know and this will be repeated, but I've been dealing with a lot of skin issues, which I know a lot of you are going through. And it is, makes you want to cry. Mm. Like it really makes you want to cry. Some days are better than others. But where I'm experiencing breakouts is a hormonal uh, reaction. So your hormones control everything, control your energy, your sleep, everything. So it's been really interesting to learn about. I'm almost doing too many things right now to help my cause. So I really almost have to slow down and do one or two things at a time so that I can actually feel what works and what doesn't instead of like... So everyone always is like, what did you do to whatever? I'm like, I do 400 things. I honestly cannot tell you. I'm like, oh, it could be like the chanting I'm doing in the morning. Could be the warm baths I'm doing on Thursdays. Like could be this vitamin. Could be this what I'm eating or so much. I think... uh, a big part of why I'm experiencing these intense cystic breakouts is my stress management. And I was telling this to you the other day where I don't feel stressed, but I know I'm experiencing stress. So being more mindful about especially like what goes on in my head. Totally. Truly. It I could don't know, be- man. I know people are like, are you stressed? I'm like, I don't know, man. <laughs> I don't know. Like, huh? Or I say, and you caught me the other day, I was like, I'm fine. Yes. And it's yes. that feeling of, I am fine, but things are going on where I need to say, yeah, things are going on. I'm feeling this way about that. Or 
So, um, yeah, that's a learned, you know, a, mm-hmm. a learn, like something you've learned in your life. There was someone else um, that I know was like that too. You know, they're like, I'm whatever, but it's, you know, when that's, uh, you're trained, yes. you know, to do that. Yes. My whole life. Yeah. My whole life. So it's, I'm working on that. <laughs> but then I also had this like really weird thought the other day. I was like, I I haven't been having sex consistently. Yeah. And that is a huge stress release. And I was actually I was thinking like, about that for you today. I, I was like, I'm breaking out because I haven't, <laughs> I haven't <laughs> boned. You're like, I need the dick <laughs> from my skin. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it I could be that. it could be a thing. A release. So anyway, line up, boys. Anyway. Mama wants to get well. <laughs> anyway, I need that clear, clear. <laughs> Yeah, mama wants to get well. <laughs> oh, fuck, dude. You know you've gone through the shit when now you want to fuck a stranger to get good skin. Yeah. You've done everything. I'm down. Everything. <laughs> <laughs> Number one wellness tip. Yeah, honestly. <laughs> fuck strangers. And I've been doing also the colon hydrotherapy oh, with yeah. India, of uh, India's Healthy Living Studio in Culver. And... That's been really eye-opening as well. Can you tell people what that is if they don't know? Yes. So India, I mean, she's been doing this for about 30 years. Colon hydrotherapy, she has a closed system where she is in the room the entire time. You put a little tube up your butt. Um, Beforehand, she's massaging my body, basically letting my body know that we're going to be doing some movement. And I love. And then you I, dance with the thing. Truly, about, right? <laughs> I'll do whatever India says. Honestly. I literally will. And uh, it's and she's just like hilarious. So mm. I'm I'm very comfortable with her. And um, so she put puts the tube in. We like massage. She's massaging my like intestines and stomach and all that the entire time. And she's very intuitive. So she knows like there's a gas pocket up here. So she has to press here in order to move it down here. Last time she said I could rock it to the moon with how much gas I had in my intestines. I was like, what? Because I'm oh. I'm off of carbonated water. Yeah. I don't drink that at, right now. So it was really interesting. And then all of a sudden, shout out to Sweet Green. All of a sudden, because I had a shroom mommy like two days ago or three days ago and I went to her like the next day and the whole shroom mommy just shot through oh, the tube. She goes, so. she goes too much fiber, Lindsay. <laughs> Dude, you can <laughs> at have too once, much. She's like, at, if you have too much fiber at one time, it mm. slows down your digestion. And she also, and I know, I think you know this with don't drink water while you're eating. And um, I only recently learned that because your stomach acids needs to need to break down the food. And if the water's in there, it dilutes it. So very interesting. And this could also help to take the stress off of my body. So kind of circling back to stress, your digestive system uses, and I don't want to fuck this up. So I'm actually going to double check this. I want some, some crazy percentage of energy of your daily energy exerted uh, compared to what the rest of the body. Yeah, it's the most. It is the most, the digestive system. So to give your system a bit of a break um, is really, really healing. 10% of your daily energy expenditure digesting and absorbing food. And But then, yeah. And then also like in the intestines where it's... So anyway, how it works is that she slowly pumps in warm water and it's breaking up the fermented food that could be stuck in your intestines because if you don't chew your food, there will be whole pieces of food in there that could get stuck, which is actually crazy. And and the gas. So you're pumping it in and out very slowly. She's controlling it all. You do feel like you're going to shit all over the table. Mm. You won't, but it is a, it's mind over matter. I can imagine there are some people that go in there and I'm pretty good with that stuff. I don't know why, but I can imagine some people are freaked the fuck out and that they want to run off the table and she, they're like, get it out, get it out, get it out. I know. <laughs> I'm going to go. I've just had a lot of stuff in my butt, you know? Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah it's yeah, kind yeah. of your thing. Yeah. Um, that's the thing about it is whatever's doing your colon hydrotherapy needs to be very chill. I had one that was not very chill and she stressed me out. And so my, I was all cramped up. Yeah. Nothing happened. What, what was not chill about it? She was just running around the room. 
talking really fast, like rubbing, but like forcing it. She was like, come on. You know, like it was like rushed. Like the process was rushed. It didn't feel good at all. Oh, I've had really good ones though. I have really good ones, but you got to be chill. Yeah. So anyway, I'm doing all the things. But for your skin. For my skin. Because it's the, you know, I... I know that we're going to be out there even more. And and granted, there's a part of me that really wants people to know that this is going on because I know a lot of people deal with it. So I don't want to hide it and I don't want to not talk about it. But it's also really challenging. Like I, 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 I'm fine talking about it with all of you out there. But I went on a... Like going on a date, I mean... But it's actually my life's lesson, to be completely honest, one of them, hmm. to um, not think Get so much, <laughs> not think so much about about pulling someone in by the way I look, hmm. and rather just connecting with someone based purely on like our sp- spirits meeting. Yeah, like if our that makes connection. Sense. Yeah, yeah. It's interesting with the your skin and the insecurity there too, because you know I feel like that with my body, you know? So all, it's like, I'm, I want to share my, you know, I, I not like I want to, I will because I have no nothing else but sharing most of my life and being very honest and vulnerable. But there are times when, you know, we're at events or something and I'm talking about it. And, you know, I don't know if you feel this way too about your skin, but it's like, then you draw attention to it and then people are looking at it and you're like, oh, fuck. You know, so I feel like it's it's kind of hard, you know, if I'm, I'm talking about um, body image issues or things that I have related to my body and I'm talking about it very publicly because then I know everyone in their head is like thinking about it. You know, they're like, oh, what is she insecure about? Or like, what? You know, okay, I see, you know. You, you know, then they're looking at you from the lens that you're talking about, your, you looking at the lens from or like that, they're looking at you with the lens that you were looking at yourself with. Yes. And so same with you. It's like talking about your skin. Then everyone's looking at it and they're like, oh, you know, da-da, why don't you try apple cider vinegar? You know, something. And you're like, shut the fuck up. <laughs> <laughs> like that's the same with my body shit. Like they're like, have you ever tried Meanwhile, I'm, I'm on like, Amazon. shut the fuck up. <laughs> I'm on Amazon buying apple yeah, cider vinegar. Vinegar. I'm, like, I'm like, yes, I've tried that. <laughs> and but I like haven't. Also with so like, like, have you tried aerial yoga? <laughs> I'm like, yeah, I did it. I did a year of it. Probiotics. Yeah, honestly. <laughs> but it's funny because you just are like, oh, I'm, you want input, but then you don't. Yeah. You know? I want input with experience. Yeah, if I'm asking for it. Permission. Exactly. If I'm paying you 500 bucks. Give me, <laughs> yeah, give, give me, me the fucking, <laughs> give me the answer. <laughs> give me the input. But I think too with with dating, it's it's interesting because to that point, I don't want to draw attention to it. Never would I ever say, Hey, like I'm dealing with some breakouts. Excuse the breakouts. Like I would never say that. But I also am just curious when I'm, say, on a date, I'm wondering if they're noticing it. I'm wondering if they're thinking something about it or whether my confidence in the moment completely just blinds them to to it. I don't know. It's just interesting. That's right. Or whether they care. That's why you're doing workout dates or like in a sports bra. Truly, to distract. Catch the vibe. To distract. I know. So they look at the ass. My huge tits. Yeah. <laughs> They're like, how can I see your skin? But she's like, oh, these are big old tits. But the, it, it, it gets worse when I work out. So I it was like can only such imagine. A, it was Just such at my, a, anybody. Yeah. Because it's red. It's sweat. It's like, it's and fire. you can't really wear makeup. Nope. I don't want to. I, yeah. You can't be doing that. Gotta let it breathe. Yo, breathe. today I, I straddled Justin and worked on this sit on his face. Oh, wait, what? <laughs> he had a zit on his face. Oh, oh, I didn't sit on his face. Oh, <laughs> oh wow. I was, I was like, she is being open 2019. <laughs> Literally, you're like, she is being honest. <laughs> so, hey guys, this is what happened. Sit on his we're face. About, we're talking about, I, I worked on, I'm not, <laughs> not worked on, I sat on his face. I, I worked on a zit that had grew on his cheek. <laughs> Uh, it was really painful for him. Justin's like, actually, I want you to yeah, work on the other one too. Oh my God, he would die. He'd be like, P, don't tell anyone. <laughs> no, that's so funny. Hilarious. It was bad. Oh, does it? Yeah. Was it like... Uh, it was like orange. You know what I'm talking about. Oh, yeah. Where it's like an, an infection. It's an oh. actual... I mean, all zits are like actually infections. But it was really bad. Underneath, like... Because guys, it's like his hair and his... Oh, yeah. You know, there's just a lot. Like you're... That's the thing with with men. Again, it's like... 
They don't really wash their face regularly. They sweat. They have the hair there. So that builds up more skin. And then their razors a lot of times aren't clean. So they don't have clean razors that are going over their skin. You know, it's just a bad cycle that they got to get out of. But it's so funny because I've been encouraging him to wash his face now. Doesn't even know how to wash his face. I'm like, okay, so you put, wa- I like left, I, love I literally left the room. I'm like, okay, here's the face wash. And he was like, he he didn't get his face wet. He put a little on his finger and he just started going <laughs> in tiny circles with two of his fingers on a dry face. I'm like, honey, you got to like get your face wet and then scrub Haven't you been watching mom do this for literally. years and years? <laughs> I come in the bed like soaking with creams soaking. every night and he didn't know how to do it. And then like he did it and he didn't do his forehead. He just was like, it was hilarious. But it's funny because I was oh. like, much like no one's ever taught me how to shoot a layup. Wow. No one has ever taught you how to wash your face. You need to put this into a little notebook. All the things you're going to teach your kids. Oh, you like, And just know. like the widest spectrum of things from washing your face to changing a tire. 100. To writing a great <laughs> Instagram bio. I know. <laughs> They're going to be so... Money. It was cute. I was in Kundalini Yoga the other day, um, which I've been doing a lot more lately. And I was like having a moment with one of the chants and the mantras and the sounds and everything. That's very high vibe. And I was like meditating, and my little like future baby, <laughs> my future spirit of my baby came in. Oh, I was like sitting yeah. on my lap. It was cute. She's so sweet. Yeah, I've got a I've got a baby attached to me already. <laughs> What? what? What about it? What of it? Yeah, what about it? <laughs> I've got a baby ghost that hangs out with me. So what? <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, so oh, your man. skin with your hormone journey. So you were, because you were on birth control for a long yes, time. Yes, I was on birth control the for same one? 12 years, basically. Okay. Yeah. Um, Did you talk to your mom to get on it or how was that process? The process was, it was a combo of wanting to- Crossing the border. Literally. Getting like, some. <laughs> <laughs> she, I started having, I had sex with my um, high school boyfriend, like my first boyfriend when I was 18 and she found out. <laughs> I did not tell her. As they do. As they fucking do. She was like crying. Um, but I was also experiencing a lot of breakouts. So I was like breaking out before the birth control. Interesting. And then I went on the birth control, cleared my skin. I did like gain a little you know, weight as you do, whatever. But I was fine on birth control. I wasn't crazy. Like it just, mm. I, I gained some weight and, and my skin cleared. And it was fine. And I just didn't like that I was taking a pill every day and I didn't know why. So I went off. And the first year, and I don't mean to say this to scare anyone who wants to get off birth control or is or just got off birth control. First year was was great and I didn't experience anything um, crazy. I felt really, really good. And then in the last like four or five months, my skin's been acting up. So I do know that my liver is also detoxing from the years and years of birth control of antibiotics when I was a young kid. All of that could and probably does still live in my liver. So it's really coming to the surface. So when I started doing celery juice more often, basically every day, all of these toxins are coming to the surface. So I'm actually... One of my new practices is I really don't want to talk badly about my skin because I think it's listening. So I really... I'm like, you're doing what you're supposed to be doing. And I trust that you're going to be clear when you're ready to be clear. That's it. You I love know? that. I read the med- over a break, I read the medical medium book and I was it was re-inspired me to like fruit, incorporate more fruit. And it was talking a lot about that effect on like your liver and then like your gut biome and especially for candida overgrowth and pH levels within your body. It was like mm-hmm. really inspiring to read about, you know, a lot of the fruits that he talked about in that book too. So I was thinking about that. I was like, I want to incorporate like more of the healthy fruits, especially since we live in California Yes, into my diet. And that's a good way for me too, for like to bring water in to my diet. You know what I mean? Like have more water. I agree. Eat your water. I agree. Sakara life. They say that. But yeah, I think, again, I just look to you and your whole process and just the commitment part because your hormone journey is not going to be the same as mine. Yeah. It's going to be the same as anyone's, but I, yeah. the commitment is and the consistency. It's funny because when I got off birth control, I had a great, I had an amazing time getting off birth control. Like I didn't, I felt better. My skin has always been fine. So I didn't have any 
adverse side effects. My hormone journey really happened when I was like with my adrenal fatigue and, you know, everything that was going on with my health at that time. So it was like all the weight gain and, you know, all this kind of stuff that was really bad. Um, But yeah, I talk about that in today's episode. And as you guys know, I am 0% a doctor. I am 0% someone that is going to be giving, is credential, has the credentials to be giving you health advice. Please see your doctor. Please talk to a doctor to get more information about getting up birth control, about balancing your hormones. But I will say, in addition to that, I did not see a doctor. I saw a specialist for my hormone health um, who ran testing with me. And I really worked with nutritionists and holistic doctors here in California um, and that we knew to figure out my path and really connect with myself and figure out what my body needed through the eight, nine months that I was um, working on my hormone health. In addition to that, we have a few episodes, one with Alyssa Beatty of Flow Living, and then we have two episodes with Candace Birch of Your Hormone Balance. Um, so Candace was the person that I worked with through my hormone journey. I love their company. Ryan and Jess are dear friends of ours. Um, Body Bliss by Jess. She is a holistic nutritionist, and she was actually my nutritionist and coach through my process, and she was instrumental in helping me with my mindset Um, during this time where I felt like I was in someone else's body and it was just really, really painful. So your hormone balance, I would highly suggest if you are having issues to get tested with Candice and to work with them to, you know, balance your hormones naturally. They provide protocols and information and testing. And then uh, Body Bliss by Jess. You can find her on Instagram and she is a great holistic health coach for anyone. If And she has like a, a specialty in hormone health as well. So those are some of my resources. But in this, I'm really um, specific about what I did to balance my hormones naturally. And those were specific to my hormonal imbalances that I also talk about. So this was my protocol. But a lot of the processes within this are helpful and great for anyone. You know, having more fat in your diet or low impact workouts or a lot of it you could really apply even if you aren't having hormonal health issues. So I'm really looking forward to kind of having this conversation with you with the preface that I am not a doctor. Do not take my advice as medical advice. Um, Take it as informational advice and an opening of a conversation for the women within our community and outside of it to really get better in touch with our bodies, to take control of our health and our hormones. Yeah, I'm excited for this one. Yeah, Yeah. it's really good. (laughs) There's actually, in the editing, I feel bad for them. It was like 20 minutes. I like stopped and ate my lunch and like it kept recording. (laughs) (laughs) So thanks for editing my lunch out. Thanks, Hayden. Yeah. (laughs) He probably like played it all the way through. He's like, I wonder what she's eating. Honestly, it was like... (laughs) (laughs) Literally. Um, Thank you all for listening. And if this episode resonates with you, please share it. We see you guys tagging us all the time and we then reshare it on our stories. And if you think someone could benefit from listening to this episode, share it with them. It's always, I always feel special if a friend passes on a book or a movie or a podcast that they think I would love. So do that. Yeah. We'll talk to you in the group on Instagram um, and we will see you on tour this summer. We love you so much. Love you. Before we jump into Krista's story about how she healed her hormone imbalance naturally, I wanted to share one of the incredibly nutritious snacks that we both found during her hormone healing journey. Kalumi makes bars that are not only nutritious, but they are rich in protein, a collagen, a marine collagen, which has the best absorption and bioavailability uh, due to its smaller particle size compared to other animal collagens. It also has only five grams of sugar. Most bars that we're eating now or that are out on the market have more sugar than they have protein. So Kalumi has five grams of sugar from root vegetables. They don't use additives gums, toxic flavorings, or anything like that. So you don't have to worry. They're delicious and they come in flavors like Sweetie Pie, Lemon Love Bar, and Coco Kiss. I love this brand. And it was started by two badass women, Chrissy and Kayla, who are on a mission to provide bars that are going to make you beautiful from the inside out. So you can try Kalumi Beauty Food at kalumibeauty.com. That's K-A-L-U-M-I Beauty. Beauty.com. Use our code almost 30 for 20% off. Hey 
guys, it's me. It's your girl, Krista. It's Krista Williams here. Excited to do another solo episode with you. This one for me is so near and dear to my heart. And it is something that I see consistently, a conversation that's being had in our uh, Facebook group, um, within my DMs, within the DMs of Almost 30 Podcast at our events. So on tour, I was blown away at how many women I had conversations with about hormones health, about hormone health, about their body, about uh, birth control, about their periods, about, you know, just feeling like, there was something that was being information that was being held from them um, related to birth control, related to how hormones affect their body and their emotions and their sex drive and their weight and how they show up in the world. Um, and I am, you know, one of those women. I felt like when I started to learn about hormones and hormone health and kind of really went through my hormone journey, um, everything changed for me. It was the missing puzzle piece to understanding my body on a holistic level, understanding my weight, um, understanding um, how my body cycles work and everything like that. I mean, I just felt like you know, where I grew up and um, the way that I was raised, it wasn't talk about, or maybe it wasn't uh, information that people knew about. Um, But my relationship to my hormones and to um, my body in that way has completely changed over the past couple years, you know, especially moving to LA and going through a, a journey of adrenal fatigue and having adrenal issues that ruined me and having um, hormone issues that made me feel like I didn't want to be in my body and I didn't want to be outside my house. And I didn't feel comfortable in the skin I was in and I didn't feel like I could get out of bed and I didn't feel like I wanted to have sex and I didn't feel like I um, could button my pants because I couldn't a lot of times. And I just didn't feel like myself and I knew something was wrong and I knew that my body was communicating to me and that I needed to listen and I needed to slow down. So this episode today of the Almost 30 podcast with Krista Williams is going to be about how I healed my hormones and how I healed my adrenal fatigue naturally something I'm actually very proud of. You know, to go through a low period in your life and then feel like you don't know what to do and feel like there's no hope and then to um, listen to your body, to actually slow down and listen to your body and listen to expert advice of people that um, know a lot more than you um, but are giving you prescriptions in quotes that are natural and holistic and then you follow them and, and be patient. You know, it didn't take long. I would say that for me, it took about seven to eight months, maybe even longer um, to get my body back after years of abuse. But I wanted to walk you guys through, you know, the journey from the beginning. Um, And you guys probably have a similar story or, you know, I'm sure a lot of you guys can relate. So um, at 15 years old, I was put on birth control. I have no idea what the brand was. Um, I know that my mom, God bless her, took me to a gynecologist that wasn't her gynecologist because she was so ashamed that I was so young and I was sexually active. I was very young and, you know, no regrets in life, but I definitely don't feel like I was doing it for the right reasons. And, you know, it kind of breaks my little heart that I didn't really understand the ways in which I could um, give and receive affection with the opposite sex outside of that. So I got caught in the act when I was very young and it was not very, not very glamorous, but my mother didn't know what to do with me. So she put me on birth control uh, and I was on, you know, some random birth control. And um, at that point, I was so young and I had no idea that it affected me. Everyone said, this will make your skin really clear. And this will make your boobs really big. And this will make your periods very regular. And I'm like, oh my God, like I'm going to have big boobs. Like, fuck yes. 
And at that time I was so young. So I had nothing. And I was like, oh my God, yes, I'll do anything for tits. Like I'm sick of these padded bras. I'll do anything. And I wanted, you know, clearer skin. So I got on the birth control and, you know, for the next couple of years, to be honest, was a really low and hard time. And I think, you know, a lot of people in high school where well, I'm all giving you a simultaneous nod and high five and thumbs up. Um, high school is a hard time for a lot of people. And I had a great part of high school and I also had really hard and low times. Um, you know, a lot of my depression um, really reared its head in high school. And I can remember days walking around and seeing no color, you know, everything was gray and I was very low and I was so emotional and I was so irrational and I was so unable to control any of my emotions. And I felt like I didn't know who I was and it felt like I didn't understand and I never thought it was my birth control, but I just thought I was super emotional, super irrational. I thought I was a little crazy. You know, I thought I was just this person that would always be this way, would always be a little bit of a rebel and would always be a little, you know, angry and just get very upset very easily. You know, being on birth control at that time, I was on it for then until college. And then in college, I switched to another birth control, still same hormonal oral birth control. You know, high school was oral hormonal birth control. I have no idea what brand. I know that it was generic to save money. (laughs) But no one really asked me how I was feeling on it. No one asked me if they thought it was affecting me. It was just a pill given to me. I took it. I was feeling all of these things, but no one really put two and two together. And I was just taking this pill. So come to college Um, I'm kind of becoming a little bit more privy to the fact that I can kind of have a say in what goes in my body. But what I wanted was a different birth control that made um, my periods shorter and lighter. And then I also heard major boobs big. So I switched to another birth control. These are my priorities, people. Listen up. And I got on this birth control and was probably worse than the first one. Because at this point, after being on the one that I was in high school, after a few years, I assumed it was my personality. And I'm not saying that I wasn't the person at the core who I am today, um, but the inability for me to manage my emotions and to you know, kind of navigate how deep I can think and feel uh, was really challenging at that time. And that birth control exacerbated it times 100. So this one in college was even worse. And the significant other that I was dating at the time called it the low estrogen days. And that was the birth control that I was on. And it was a fucking wild ride. I would not say that I was fun to be around. I would not say that I was very cool, calm, or collected. Um, And that was another thing, you know, just made me really, really emotional and just not feel like myself and not feel like I was in my body or I was in control of all these things I was feeling and I felt like I would react in ways and not really know, you know, what it was about. But I had no idea. I had no idea what these pills actually did to me, what they actually did to my body. No one ever told me uh, the negatives. No one ever told me, you know, any of the side effects related to them. I was just taking it because that's what you're doing. So I was on this for maybe a year, the low estrogen, probably shorter. Actually, I got off that really pretty quickly um, after I would like probably throw my heels across the room or something crazy. And then I got in another one. And um, the name of that one is escaping me, but that one was probably the best one of the hormonal uh, choices that I was on. I think it was, I'm not exactly sure, but, and I felt, you know, better than the ones before, but still not completely like myself. But I thought this was life. And I thought that unhappiness was a normal thing. And I felt like I thought that, you know, being so moody was a normal thing. And that some days feeling like you're on top of the world and some days feeling like you actually don't know why you exist was normal. So that was kind of like my experience. And this, you know, could be play into the fact that I've had depression and anxiety run in my family as well. But um, since being off hormonal birth control, I felt like I have an ability to um, really help myself with those things so much more. 
And when I started to, so then fast forward after college, I'm on a hormonal birth control. I'm living in Chicago. And this is kind of when my life is starting to change. I'm kind of having an awakening. Um, I got out of a long-term relationship. I um, quit my full-time job, which you guys can listen to the podcast episode where I talk about my career trajectory and um, quitting my full-time job at that point um, in Chicago following my bliss, going to Patagonia for a few months to kind of get centered, figure out who I was. And at that time I learned to meditate and actually through meditation, you know, I was given people say download or I was given a message or I was just given this like little hint that I should get off hormonal birth control. So I did that. I was 26 years old, maybe younger, maybe 24 I have no idea like the difference between years and your 20s. So it was around 24 to 26. And I got the IUD, um, the non-hormonal IUD. It's the copper IUD. So that is, um, again, non-hormonal. There's no hormones. And it is something that sits at the base of your cervix and it can last, you know, for five, 10 years. Um, I think that they have a differing opinion for how long it can last, but I've had mine in for about five, I've had my in since. So it's been about five or six years that I've had mine in now. And, um, you know, I'll never forget it. The pain getting it in was incredible. And that I think speaks to living a mostly pain-free life, being a little bitch. But I think it really speaks to um, the pain of getting it put in. It hurts. But in my period was really heavy after. But All things aside, you know, those two things aside, the hormonal IUD was one of the greatest decisions. And I finally felt like I was like, oh, this is who I am. And this is actually what I'm like. And this is my personality, not um, blanketed by uh, hormones that are indicating how I should be thinking or feeling. And this is actually what life is like. I felt like I had been living my whole life with foggy glasses on and I finally cleaned off my glasses and got brand new clear glasses and I was seeing life from a completely different perspective. I can't even tell you how different life felt after getting an IUD. I felt like almost like my life had started. You know, I felt like that when I met Justin. My life had started. Um, But I also felt like that when I got the Paragard Copper IUD. So that's the one, the brand I have, Paragard. Shout out. If you want to sponsor, I'm all yours. So coming off of the holidays, I am feeling a bit like I need a detox. So for the past few days, I have been drinking Dirty Lemon Functional Beverage in charcoal every single day. It's a gentle daily detox, which has honestly improved my digestion, stimulates my liver function. I know that because my pee is yellow and getting all the toxins out. And I just feel cleansed. And honestly, it helps my skin as well. Because sometimes after I drink and eat like shit, uh, my skin is gray. So I really notice a difference. Dirty Lemon is our go-to for functional beverages. They have everything from your go-to beauty beverage, which has collagen in it. It hydrates your skin, increases skin elasticity, uh, reduces wrinkles, you name it. They also have one for all day energy, the ginseng. Um, That one really helps me focus. I usually drink it on a work day. And they have their new functional beverage, the turmeric, which really helps with my inflammation. so And of course, they have their sleep beverage, which helps me to sleep like a goddamn baby. So if you'd like to try Dirty Lemon, you can go to dirtylemon.com, use our code ALMOST30, and you will get an extra free case in your first order. So dirtylemon.com, D-I-R-T-Y lemon.com. Use our code ALMOST30 for an extra free case in your first order. 2019 hit and we got a slew of messages from Almost 30 Nation letting us know that you all are doing an overhaul on your products, your brands in your cabinets that you are putting on your body and in your body. And we're so damn proud of you. You are making sure that everything is natural and and healthy and safe for you, ethically sourced. I mean, come on. 
So good. Um, one of the brands that we love that we know you can turn to for all the things that are good for you and ethically sourced is Kopari Beauty. Uh, Kopari is using 100% pure organic coconut oil sourced from the Philippines to create products that are effective, luxurious, but all natural and super pure. Uh, you can trust them. They have no sil- sulfates, silicones, no parabens, no GMOs, no toxins. Seriously, not kidding. And of course, my favorite from Kopari Beauty. I've said this before. I have one in every corner of my life, <laughs> the deodorant. So you can empower your pits uh, under your arms with pure coconut confidence. This aluminum-free deodorant glides on clear, absolutely clear. It smells delicious. It's never sticky. Uh, it doesn't create any craziness under the arms because you're trying to slather it on all you know, violently. It goes on super, super easily. And I know you're going to love it. So to try Kopari, all of their products, we love koparibeauty.com. You can use our code almost 30 for 15% off. So that's K-O-P-A-R-I beauty.com. Use our code almost 30 for 15% off. Even at this time, I had, I don't say no idea, but I don't think I had that much of an idea. You know, I knew I was like, okay, I don't want to do hormones anymore. I think that's kind of what I I knew I wanted to move away from, but I didn't necessarily know what each of the hormones were, the role that they played in our bodies, the role that they played for me, you know, what my hormonal like profile was like within my body. I I really didn't know. Uh, The only kind of hormone or the only hormone that I knew at that point was cortisol and cortisol because it was the stress hormone and because it could give you belly fat. So I was like, a cortisol, don't want that belly fat. That's the only hormone that I care about. And I want it to be as, as low as possible. You know, I had no idea that like it should actually be high in the morning to help wake you up and make you bright-eyed and bushy-tailed, as Kelly Levesque says, and then lower in the day and then trail off that night, you know, to help you sleep really well. I just wanted, you know, no cortisol. But that's kind of like the idea that I had. And um, so after Chicago, um, I got on my IUD, was feeling so much better, just feeling like I could finally, you know, be myself. And then I moved to New York um, for Justin and just to build another life. And that's where I kind of was obsessed with becoming a soul cycle instructor. So I'm not going to tell that whole story. But um, at that time, I had moved to New York. I was working at a job, but I really wanted to become a soul cycle instructor. So for me, that meant to lose a lot of weight. That meant to work out all the time. And that meant, which meant for me, pre-workout. So I took tons of pre-workout. I would be doing soul cycle six, seven times a week, you know, sometimes twice a day. And I was very lucky that I became friends with a lot of the people that worked there, Julie, my good friend, Julie Caputo, um, and then a lot of the instructors. So, um, you know, I would ride as their guest. So I wasn't, you know, I wasn't at at the place where I was like able to pay for my classes. So I'm grateful for the community there um, for letting me ride as a guest a lot of times when I wanted to be an instructor. Just got to give you that caveat if you're doing the math in your head, because I would be too. So I was doing soul cycle five or six times a week or five to seven times a week, maybe more. And I was also doing a tone house, which is a workout there that's hit. I was doing lifting on my own. I would sprint on my own and I was taking pre-workout once, maybe twice a day. If I was working out at two a days, um, almost every time before I work out. And in addition to that, I would also take diet pills. So I um, was taking a brand of diet pill um, and I would take two a day, maybe more sometimes. And this was part of my routine. You know, I was trying to get really lean. I was trying to look like a fitness instructor and I was trying to look the part and be the part and be as fit and thin as I could. And, you know, to be honest, it worked for the time. You know, I probably lost more weight than I ever had in my life, you know, in a period of time. And I was thinner and leaner than I have ever been in in my life. But this was like killing myself at the gym, doing nothing but the workouts, 
um, killing my body, taking all these crap diet pills and just doing all of the things. And, you know, I had no idea what the effect that all of this had on my body. And in addition to all of those things to my body uh, was a time of partying. I was also partying a lot. I was like a club girl in Chicago and I was kind of a club girl in New York, not really, because I was with Justin. So we'd be like cuddle girls. I'd be a cuddle girl, but um, we were also going to a lot of music festivals and I was doing a lot of ecstasy and I was doing a lot of Molly and um, those are uppers and those are stimulants and those really fucked my adrenals up and those really fucked my hormones up. Um, I was doing it, you know, very regularly. Uh, which is fun and it's a very growing experience and, you know, I'm not recommending it to anyone, but it really, really, really ended up being the, um, the straw that broke the camel's back for me and being, you know, at even like two music festivals, um, at the end and being so sick, I couldn't even get out of bed being puking all day. There was like, a period of a few weeks where I'd just be puking all day. I'd be so sick because my adrenals were so shot. But I didn't really even understand that that's why. I thought it was like bad batches, but it was really, I was so, so sick from my, you know, poor adrenals. And so I was still doing all of those things. And it really was when I moved to LA and sort of crashed and burned and my body, you know, gave up and decided to start to tell me how sick it had been feeling and how crappy it had been feeling. And after two years of living in New York, taking diet pills, doing pre-workout all the time, doing too many high-intensity workouts, not sleeping appropriately, doing lots of um, recreational drugs, that um, it was done. You know, through the course of uh, a few days in um, LA, I remember feeling so exhausted that I I I didn't know. I I knew something had to be wrong because I was so depressed and I was so exhausted. And at that time, I was still trying to take diet pills and I would take them and I would start to get so sick that I would throw up and I would be just laying in bed, like convulsing. I was so unwell, you know, after taking them. And I'd still try and do the HIIT workouts. I was still trying to do a berries followed by a soul cycle because actually at that point, I started to put on weight. And my body started to uh, hold on to weight, hold on to inflammation, hold on to water, and just hold on to everything because it was done. It was done. The diet pills were no longer going to work. Those uppers were no longer going to work. And one of the best ways you can get me to pay attention to my body is by putting on weight. Promise that I will try and see what's going on if you put on a few pounds. And I'm I'm like hugging my body now because it's listening. And it's like, I know, I know, bitch. You always use weight as an indicator which it's not. It's not always an indicator, but uh, for someone that has, you know, body image issues um, and tries to, you know, stay at a certain weight based on the way that I was raised and things that have happened in my life, that's a good way for me to stop and slow down. I would be talking to uh, my friend, Ryan, who I got really close with and who I'm still very close with, Ryan Birch, um, my sweet Ryan. And I would be crying to her in the car because I had put on a certain amount of weight. You know, I don't want to say numbers to trigger anyone, um, but I'd put on a certain amount of weight. I had no sex drive. I couldn't get out of bed. I was so depressed. Um, everything felt like such a, so challenging. It was like, I didn't feel like I could be in my body. I didn't feel comfortable in my body. Um, I had such a sensitivity to any stimulants and coffee. I'm done. I'm done for the day. I couldn't, Couldn't get out of bed if I had a sip of coffee. Um, I'd have nausea all day. I had weight gain um, in really weird areas too. Like my face was like insane. My face always like stays pretty, um, pretty soft. Um, I've always had, I've always had pretty, pretty chub cheeks, um, but it was like crazy. And it was also around my arms and my back. I remember I'd be like in soul cycle classes trying to like work off this, you know, weight that I'd gained. Like, oh my God. And I could feel my like body shaking, like almost like it was like, it was just the weirdest feeling. I was like, what is all this weight? You know, I've never had this much before. And I just couldn't handle any sort of stressors, like anything that would mess with me. Um, And at that time, you know, I was like going through a lot of transition. So it was just fucking my world up. I'm thinking about it now. It's just so hard. 
So I was talking to Ryan and I was like, dude, I'm feeling all these things, you know, X, Y, and Z. And she's like, you know, thank God. I mean, she's like, have you thought about getting your hormones checked? And I'm like, hormones? Like, I've never thought about that. You know, I've never... And she started to talk about some of the symptoms that people often have um, when they get... um, have adrenal fatigue or when they have hormone issues. And I was like, oh my God, maybe, maybe that's me. You know, maybe, maybe there is something, you know, and I'm, I'm willing and excited to learn. And she was kind enough to connect me with her amazing mom, Candace Birch of Your Hormone Balance. Um, so I took the test and at that time it was a spit test. I sent in the spit test results, praying that I could find a solution because I felt like I wasn't at home in my body. I felt like I didn't know what was going on. And I kind of knew that everything that I had used previously to control my weight, such as diet pills, was kind of coming to an end. And that was going to be something that I was never going to do again. Um, And that was going to be something that I needed to change. And that was going to be something that I would learn a lesson from. And I knew that was happening. Um, and I knew that things needed to change and I needed to be able to get out of bed every day and I needed to be able to not be nauseous and, and feel good. Um, so I took the test and a few weeks later, so this test is a spit test. There are various types of hormone tests. Um, you know, the one that I would obviously recommend is doing it with Candace of your hormone balance. This isn't sponsored. Um, just something that has changed my life. And I love the way that Candace speaks to her clients. She's a a dear friend. Um, Ryan obviously is so good at what she does with the company too, but we got on the phone, Candace and I to talk about my test results. So we're talking about my test results. I'm feeling all these type of way. And as soon as we get on the phone, everything makes sense. Like she's talking through and I feel like the, again, I feel like the missing puzzle piece. I feel like I'm finally understanding a part of my body and a part of the systems within my body that control so much that I had no idea about. So I was estrogen dominant. So that meant that my estrogen was um, too high and that it was way higher than my progesterone levels. So progesterone is the sister hormone to estrogen. So it works in tandem with it to regulate you know, the entire reproductive system throughout when you're fertile. And you know, this was kind of showing up in the way that weight was being distributed on my body and the fact that it was like my arms and my back and in my face and these weird areas and that, you know, I was just completely off. And I also had, in addition to that, my progesterone levels were um, not in the right place in this in my cycle. So I don't know too much about it, but my progesterone levels were also um, too low. And then um, my cortisol levels were actually healthy in the morning and then they were completely flatlining during the day. So that's when I would feel exhausted and tired and basically have no energy. Um, And I would, you know, literally be sleeping for the half the afternoon. I would, you know, like sometimes I I was working from home at that time before I I was unemployed for a little bit and I would sleep all afternoon and I would say I need to take lunch and I'd be sleeping because I couldn't stay up and I couldn't stay awake. And then at night time, my cortisol levels were picking up, which meant I was having nightmares, which meant I wasn't getting restful sleep, which meant I was having these like night terrors, to be honest. I have really vivid, intense dreams at points. So I was having these terrible nightmare dreams and um, my cortisol level was really a lot of the effect of that. And then my testosterone, which is another one of your hormones, was very low. So I did had low testosterone levels. And then there was adrenal fatigue. So obviously my adrenals were completely shot and that was affecting a lot of, you know, my hormone levels in my body. So at a high level, um, the estrogen too high. Estrogen is the... Um, angel of life is what they say. It makes your cells grow. It helps you develop your uterus, your breasts, your periods, um, the egg within the ovary. And um, it also can be called the angel of death because if there is too much estrogen in the body, it can become very, very toxic. So very um, making sure that your estrogen levels are in a healthy range is very important. Progesterone, like we talked about, 
is the sister hormone to estrogen. They need to be in a balance to one another. And progesterone plays most of its role in the second half of your menstrual cycle. And it's essential to uh, taking a pregnancy to full term. Um, It also helps with your blood sugar levels um, and can really help to calm you and keep you your moods under control. So progesterone is very important into in your moods and a lot of things related to that. And you know, another note too, thinking about breast cancer. In breast p- cancer prevention, progesterone is the most important um, role in the body is to balance estrogen. So when your progesterone and estrogen levels are off, that can lead to that can probably be a precursor to breast cancer, but don't quote me on that. And then testosterone. So when we think of testosterone or when I think of testosterone, I always think of men and I always think of, you know, that a man needs to have high testosterone and they need to work out and, you know, all of that type of thing. But really women um, do have uh, really important functions that testosterone plays in their health. Um, so these include libido, maintaining your sexual function, um, normal growth and the renewal and the regeneration of all your muscle tissue, uh, your bones and other tissues. So it also really helps to um, with your breast health. So at a cellular level, keeps your breasts healthy. Um, so what I understand now and what I've really understood throughout the process is how important testosterone is for maintaining lean muscle mass and kind of keeping a fit and toned body. So although um, it is a little bit lower than in men, you know, everyone's is actually different. So that's a general statement, but that's what's believed to be true. Um, It's very important in female bodies. And then cortisol is another one of the hormones. So cortisol is the uh, steroid hormone that regulates a wide range of processes throughout the body. So this includes your immune response. This also re- includes your metabolism, and it has a very important, important role in how your body handles stress. So too much of it is a bad thing, um, which can lead to weight gain around the stomach, and then too little makes you very sluggish and tired. So in the afternoon, I'd be very sluggish and tired, and then at night when it would pick up for me, I was very awake and I was wide-eyed and I was having nightmares about swimming in pools of dead babies. That's a fucking true story. Sadly, isn't that fucked up? It's crazy. So got my test results. Still feeling like I am so unhappy in my body. I I mean, thank God for Ryan. We used to just sit in her car and I would just be so upset. You know, I didn't even know what to do. And after talking to Candace, you know, she put me on a protocol to heal them naturally. Um, and the suggestions that she provided to me, I, you know, had a had a hard think and look at myself and had to really make sure that I was going to go by this protocol if I wanted to change my life, if I wanted to sleep better, if I wanted to feel better in my body, if I wanted to feel um, like I had energy, if I wanted to feel like I was myself, I had to do it. At this time too, I was also I also started to work with Jess Sukan of Body Bliss by Jess, who also helped me to really we rewire rewire my brain and help think more clearly about my relationship with food and my body. So she was also instrumental in my process of this hormone journey. So over the course of the next six, seven, eight, nine months, this is what I did to heal my hormones naturally. The first was I worked out less. So, you know, if you're thinking about it, someone that's working out that much, it is very easy to not work out as much and work out less. But my mentality was that I wanted to lose the weight. I had all this weight on my body. I was uncomfortable. I was the heaviest I've ever been, you know, all of these things. And I was living in a new city. And LA is not a city that I wanted to feel this way in. That's the damn show. So I was feeling so uncomfortable in my skin. And to tell someone that usually used uh, working out as a way to um, counteract what they ate uh, to work out less, it was very hard. But over time, I was able to um, find things besides hit workouts, like walks with friends. I would quite often go on walks with friends and I would start to do yoga classes and Pilates classes, but really essentially it was cutting down my workouts from seven days a week, um, sometimes twice a day to um, four to five days a week, once a day. 
Um, and this didn't happen immediately. Of course, you know, it took me a little bit of time to um, work through this process mentally, work through it with Jess, work through it with my journal, work through it with myself. But in the end, um, it was really, really important to not be um, putting my body through such intense stressors multiple times a day at hit workout classes like Soul Cycle, like Berries, who I love, but to really slow down slow down, give my body a break, you know, let it heal, let myself become the person that I was before and stop doing these crazy intense workouts all the time. Something else that I also did regarding workouts is that I would wake up and I would lift in the morning. So when I was working out, I was doing things like Pilates or bar or lifting on my own. And these things, lifting in the morning can help to increase testosterone which was something that I wanted to do to balance my hormones. Um, Your hormones work together. So all of them are communicating with one another. So by moving one more closely to being in balance, you can help move the others more closely to being in balance. So lifting in the morning helps increase your testosterone. So I started to do that. Um, I started to walk. I would go on walks once a day, you know, sometimes twice a day because I was in such a mindset of working out. Sometimes I would do 15,000 steps a day. So I was still in a, a place where I was kind of unhealthy with it, but I was making myself walk instead of run or sprint or any of the the things. So um, right now where I am at in my life, I really focus on yoga for my mental. I'll do strength training. I will do walking. Sometimes I'll run. Every once in a while I'll hit, but really my workouts are so much less than they were now, especially since being on tour. Um, And right now at this place where I am, I feel like the less I work out, actually the better I feel. And that's coming from someone that really was like addicted to the workout. So it's not like the less I work out, which means I work out once a month. It's like three to four times a week, four to five times a week. And being really um, gentle with my body and kind of trying to tune in and listen as much as possible is really, really good for me. So now I focus on strength training with Pure Bar, free weights, Pilates, yoga always, uh, walking, and every once in a while, a good hit session, maybe once every three weeks, you know, if friends are going. That was the first less workouts, less high intensity workouts, the timing of my workouts. So lifting in the morning, if I was going to do a cardio, having it be in the evening when your cortisol levels are much lower was really also helpful because if I was doing my HIIT workouts in the morning, then my cortisol levels are already high naturally, then I would spike them even more and that would kind of fuck me for the rest of the day. So the second thing that I did in addition to that to heal my hormones naturally is to increase my fat intake. This was major and this is major in my health journey in general. Um, I was a protein person for you know most of my life. I believed that protein was the key to lean body mass. Protein was the key to looking good. Protein was like everything. You know, I was low fat my whole life, really growing up. We were a diet family. We had diet everything. We had crackers. We had, you know, all the carbs in the world and we did not do fat. Like we did coconut oil. No, no, no. Avocado. No, 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 no. Like anything that had fat was bad. We had, can't believe it's not butter. We, you know, just ate everything light. We were like an L-I-T-E family. Um, So I was definitely not doing fat. Um, And at this time when I had my hormones tested and I started to understand my body in that way, I luckily had on our podcast, Kelly Lebeck. Be Well by Kelly. So our sweet angel, Kelly Levesque, came on the podcast and blew our fucking mind with the Fab Four equation, the Fab Four magic. So she told us about um, the Fab Four, which is protein, fat, fiber, and greens. So checking in your diet and seeing that all of these components are a part of your plate at every meal, most likely, or hopefully. And this was something that I wasn't doing before. So I was focusing on protein, uh, fiber at points, not really. Uh, Greens, yes, but not the fat. And having fat in my diet has nourished my adrenals, has nourished my hormones, 
has really, really helped me to stabilize my blood sugar levels so that I don't have my cortisol spiking and that my progesterone can be healthy and that everything can really work in sync, that I'm not getting stressed out because I don't have a sugar high and then a crash. There's so much that plays into the importance of fat in my diet and the importance of fat in um, regulating my blood sugar levels um, and its relation to my hormone health. It's been crazy. And I have completely noticed a difference too in my skin, in my hair, in the regularity of my periods. So my periods are much more regular when I'm having fat consistently. I am much happier because my blood sugar levels are even, uh, which allows me to be in a better mood because I'm not um, you know, falling prey to sugar crashes. And I just feel better. So fat has really, really been a game changer for me diet-wise as far as nourishing my hormones, nourishing my adrenals, um, getting back to a better energy and weight state by controlling my blood sugar levels. So the way that I incorporate fat into my diet is with avocados. So that's number one. I usually have a full avocado every day. Um, I will put a full avocado in my smoothie. No shame. I make my smoothies thick as fuck. So full avocado in the smoothie. I will also do coconut milk, sometimes full fat coconut milk, which is amazing. Um, I will do um, coconut oil. I will have that in desserts um, quite often. And really, I just kind of keep an eye on what I'm eating and I'm not afraid of fat. So if that's a nut butter, that's a seed butter, if that's a coconut wrap, or if that's a you know high fat dip or sauce, I'm just not afraid. And I make sure that it's a healthy fat, that it's an unsaturated fat, and that it's a fat that's going to really make me feel good. And you know, one of the things that Kelly Levesque said of Be Well by Kelly, one of our dear friends, you can um, search for the podcast episodes with her just by going to iTunes and searching Kelly Levesque. We've had her on a few times, and those episodes have been great, especially if you're thinking about you know health and wellness. But she talked about how uh, fat. Uh, protein, fat, fiber, and greens, but mostly protein and fat helps to turn off hunger hormones. So it keeps you focusing on what you want to focus on rather than thinking about being hungry all the time. And I've really found that the more fat that I have, the more I'm able to um, you know, focus on what I want to focus on, whether that's the podcast, the business, my personal life, whatever it is, I'm able to really be in control of my mind and my thoughts because I'm not hungry. And your girl, your girl gets hungry. All right, so I was home where I'm from in Ohio about a year ago, and I remember going in my sister's fridge, and she had this vegan cookie dough, and I... Oh. It was over. Uh Uh-oh. It was over. (laughs) What was was it made of? The rest of my day. It was so good. It was... The one is a black bean brownie batter. It was made of black beans, so it has fiber and just a lot less sugar and just amazing for you, and the other was made of chickpea, Um, and that was like a almond cookie dough one that tasted more like chocolate chip cookies and it was from Hungry Root. So from that point on, I was obsessed and I was such a fan of what they're doing and I know that my sister loves them. She's been working or she's been ordering from them for a long time. So when they approached us to work together with Almost 30 Podcast and Almost 30 Nation, I was so excited to share them with y'all. Yeah, their mission is to make healthy eating easy. Honestly, every time I'm in the grocery store, I'm standing in the aisle. I have my little basket and I'll have a bunch of shit in it, but I don't know what I'm going to do with it. I know it's all healthy, but I'm just like, I I know. So uh, they make it easy by setting fresh pre-prepared ingredients or pre-prepped, excuse me, ingredients that turn into delicious, nutritionally balanced meals. Yeah. So whether that's like cauliflower rice or broccoli rice or butternut zoodles or all of those kind of things, they basically give you everything you need um, to make an amazing meal. And I do not like to cook, as you guys know, but everything is so simple and it's stuff that I would already be buying. And I like that it gives you control of portions. With yes. Stuff. So how much sauce I want, how much veggies I want. And that's what um, I really love about Hungry Root. 
Yes. And previously, Hungry Root was all vegan and gluten-free, but in January this month, they're introducing non-plant-based proteins like salmon and chicken sausage, as well as some gluten options. And it's just tailored to your diet. So whether you're vegan, vegetarian, gluten-free, etc., they have something for you. So if you'd like to try Hungry Root, you can go to hungryroot.com slash almost 30. That's H-U-N-G-R-Y-R-O-T ot.com slash almost 30 and you can get $25 off two deliveries. Whoa. Whoa. Enjoy. Enjoy. 2019 is going to be a super travel heavy year for me and Krista and we could not be more excited about it. We're going to see you guys. So holla. Um, But one way in which we stick to our routine and make it all the more enjoyable is bringing along our individual packets of Four Sigmatic. We are obsessed with the magic of mushrooms. If you don't believe it, just try it. Let us know. The all-stars are Reishi, Chaga, Cordyceps, and Lion's Mane. Uh, They help you with everything from relaxing to feeling well, you know, helping your gut, energizing you, supporting your productivity. Um, I cannot say enough about this brand. You can go to foursigmatic.com slash almost 30 and it'll take you to our landing page. And there you'll find our picks, our favorites that we take on the road. Um, One that I love and is my staple every evening. I have their reishi hot chocolate. And my newest favorite is their adaptogen coffee. So they're mixing coffee with adaptogens so it helps you to metabolize the caffeine. So if you'd like to experiment with these magical freaking mushrooms that we love so much, it hurts. Go to foursigmatic.com slash almost 30. Uh, You will get 15% off at checkout if you enter the code almost 30. This brand rocks, period, the end. So we talked about fat, talked about working out less. Now we're going to talk about meditation. Meditation, if you guys have listened to the podcast, has been one of the catalysts for completely changing my life, for completely helping me connect to myself, for giving me such downloads as to get off hormonal birth control, to move to New York, or to um, you know move forward with almost 30. So meditation has really changed my life. But meditation in this process was very, very important for me in calming down at night. So because my cortisol levels were spiking in the evening, I needed to find a way to help naturally bring those down. So someone could take a sleeping pill or a Xanax. I don't even know if that would do anything to your cortisol, but it would definitely help you sleep. But I wasn't going to do that. And I know that for me, meditation and breath work, um, being present, being calm, kind of taking a second really, really helps me to calm down, be in my body, be more present and just relax. Importantly, relax in this instance. So I started to meditate at night. I always meditated in the morning, but I added meditation at night, 15 to 20 minutes. I just do mantra meditation, um, a little bit like TM, but you can also do um, meditation apps like Calm. We love Calm. Or you can listen to podcasts like Tara Brock, B-R-A-C-H. She has great meditations that are between 15 and 20 minutes um, that are really easy to follow. So these meditations help to lower my cortisol levels at night, help me to sleep more restfully, which in the end helps everything if you're sleeping restfully and you are you know, getting the most out of your, your sleep. And that was really, really important for me that I was finally sleeping again um, after you know a week or so or a few weeks of the meditation and calm at night, I was able to sleep, which is everything. You know, when you've been having bad dreams and nightmares and you're unable to sleep. So that's meditation. One of the really, really important ones um, that is probably very obvious is the no caffeine stimulants pre-workout, Molly, Coke, ecstasy, MDMA, all of that stuff. I can't even think of any other like slang terms. I'm out of the game, but none of it. Nothing. No tea, no coffee, like nothing. No caffeine, not even, no diet pills, all of that. I was going to be stimulant free. That for me was, you know, the drug thing is it was, it was easy um, because I wasn't necessarily addicted. I'm not exactly sure. 
but it made me absolutely so ill that there was no way that I was going to do it again. And at this point, I was kind of moving out of that phase and I was kind of moving into like a more clear state. Um, I hadn't been drinking for a few years at that, for maybe two years at that point. And I've talked about that before, but I just don't really drink. You know, I don't really enjoy it. So I wasn't really drinking and um, quitting diet pills was easy because I was sick of that shit. I was sick of being on and off fucking diet pills for years and years, like hydroxy cut, like all of that shit. I was just over it. And at this point, I was so unhappy with my body. I was like, I didn't even care. And then caffeine, I never really drank coffee or tea that much. I kind of did at the end to like give myself a boost, but I was kind of done with that too. And uh, pre-workout was making me fucking sick. So I was over it. So cutting out all of those stimulants. And at this point in my life, I have tea, like four sigmatic tea or coffee. Mm, every once in a while, I'll have their um, non-caffeinated drinks like the turmeric latte or the cocoa um, more regularly. But I really don't drink caffeine. I really don't. I'll have a matcha every once in a while, but I won't drink it very regularly. And it'll kind of be a special occasion. It will be when my body is nourished, not on an empty stomach, not before I'm working out. And it will be for like the right reasons because I'm feeling it and not because it's like a habit. So I don't do any diet pills, any stimulants, um, any drugs. And I haven't for the past, you know, couple years. And that has been you know, a game changer, especially for my adrenals. I know that they don't really love the caffeine. I know obviously they don't love the drugs, but I know they don't love the caffeine. So that has been something that I definitely have sworn to not do regularly and I don't. So if you are having any of these issues, I would suggest, you know, kind of checking those areas of your life out too. Less sugar. This is one of the last ones. So having less sugar in my diet is a major key. Focusing my diet on more fat and less sugar, which is you know what I do, I check for fat and sugar now instead of calories and protein and all of that. I focus on having less than ten grams in everything I eat. You know, ideally it's under ten. You need to check too for serving sizes. You know, a lot of times they get you when it's a five grams of sugar, six grams of sugar, and it's two servings per container. You bet your ass, I mean, that whole thing. So I need to kind of watch and make sure that I'm trying to stay under 10 grams of sugar for when I eat something. This isn't over the course of the day, of course. You know, I've never been hard and fast about really anything um, related to that. But now I just, I don't drink sugary beverages. I don't really have kombucha a lot. I love it. But, you know, the sugar at points was kind of a little much because I get addicted. And for me, this is very personal because... I am a sugar gal through and through. I've been a sugar lover my whole life. And once I start, I cannot stop. So I would have bars with sugar. I would have treats with sugar, all of the things, you know, really just focusing on less sugar, more fat, more whole foods has also really helped me to maintain a better mood because of my blood sugar. I'm less anxious. Um, I'm less crazy. I'm like not thinking about food as much. I'm not thinking about my next meal, my next treat. Because with sugar, it was like, once I started, it's like, lock me in a fucking room. I mean, throw away the key. I People be like, oh, do you want a cookie? I'm like, no. And they'd probably be like, oh, I wonder if she doesn't want a cookie. Like, what's the deal? These cookies are awesome. I'm like, yo, like, do I want one cookie? No, because I want that whole tray of cookies and you can just like walk away because I'm going to eat the whole thing. I, I go hard or I go home with treats. So as knowing that about me, I'm an abstain, I'm an abstainer. I kind of had to just cut them out completely. Of course, I have my treats, but I try and focus on high fat, low sugar treats like keto puddings or stuff like that. Okay. So the nourishment of the body is key within those things. So less sugar is nourishing to my body. More fat is very nourishing to my body. Meditation is nourishing to my soul. No caffeine was nourishing to my body and my soul. Um, and then working out less was so nourishing to my body. It was it was very, very key. Now the vitamins. So um, the vitamins within my protocol are mostly, or all natural actually, and they are um, things that you can buy on Amazon or um, you know anywhere online. We'll also in the show notes have links to some that you can buy the ones that I used. And I know that some brands are better than others, but there's a lot out there. So just make sure you do your research as related to it. And these vitamins that I used were maca. So maca was one of them that helped to balance my mood, um, increase my libido, 
uh, which was helpful because at that point, you know, I felt like ass about my body and my sexuality and my like sex drive is 100% related to like how good I feel about my body. Um, I don't know if I'm the only one, but that's what it is. So increased my libido and then it had high BCE vitamins, magnesium and amino acids. And it also has tons of phytonutrients to help balance those hormones. So um, I, you could take you know, the dosages are different because in its adaptogen, but it helped my body adjust to the environmental stressors that it was, you know, I had put under it. So I really noticed a difference when I started taking maca. That's M-A-C-A. Another one that I took to balance my hormones naturally was holy basil. It helped me to balance my cortisol levels and reduce anxiety. So this was helpful when I was feeling anxious and my cortisol levels were trying to recalibrate within my body. Uh, so taking holy basil was really helpful for my cortisol. Ashwagandha. Um, I really, really love this. I still take this very regularly. Um, it's an adaptogenic herb that has been said to combat combat the effects of stress, reduce anxiety, depression, and help stabilize blood sugar, protect the immune system, and make you overall happier. Um, I felt like it was really, really helpful in stabilizing my blood sugar and helping to really calm any anxiety or depression that I was sort of going through at that time. So that's something I still take now and something that I really loved. I also took astrologus root. That's A-S-T-R-A-G-A-L-U-S root. And it also helped to lower cortisol in my body. So I took this before bed. Um, and it really acts like an anti-inflammatory, which boosts the immune system. Um, so by taking this before bed, when my cortisol levels were going high, when I was meditating, it really helped to balance my cortisol levels out. So those were some of the um, the pills that I took and some of the vitamins. I know there are so many others. There's like Hushi Woo. Like there's just a bunch. And if, you know what, if you go into Moon Juice, they have so many, they have so many great adaptogens. Four Sigmatic has great adaptogens in a lot of their supplements. Hum Nutrition has um, the raw beauty powder, which I love. And that actually has tons of adaptogens that really, really help to support your body in the healing process. And that's really what a lot of these do is helped my body support it while I was doing the other things related to my mental state, my physical state, my emotional state to heal my hormones. And a lot of um, the things that we talked about, you know, during this conversation were related to my physical. So the workouts less, um, the eating, and then um, there was things related to my mental talking about meditation, you know, so that's something that's so important for my mental state. And that was something that I was really, really focusing on at the time. And then for my emotional, I really, really leaned on um, Ryan and Jess, you know, I was working with Jess to kind of help me rewire my brain and how I saw my body and, you know, the worth that I put on it related to my weight and the challenges that I had um, about my weight and the state of my body. And then talking to Ryan, you know, about those same issues and kind of going through whatever I was going through, having the emotional support that I had during such a hard time was also really, really helpful uh, for me as I was like working through all of this. And I will say, you know, I, um, I know it's so hard and I know that when you don't feel comfortable in your body that it's like for me was in the situation where I felt like I couldn't be comfortable in my body. And um, if you feel that way, you know, this is definitely something that you're going to want to check out and um, get help around because it was a game changer for me. And I know a lot of women are in um, a similar situation where, you know, they were put on birth control. They don't really know why they want to explore the idea of getting off of it or changing it or mixing it up or educating themselves more or whatever the case may be. I think that getting your hormones checked, caring about your body in a holistic way and being in it for the long game. So if you would have told me, you know, that it was going to take me nine, whatever months, nine months to feel better in my body and mind you, better in my body didn't mean that I lost all the weight, to be honest. Better in my body meant I felt like I was more at home. I felt like I could sleep. I felt like I could get up. I felt like I was actually like moving into the rhythm of my body. My periods were back. So during this time, I also wasn't getting my period. 
which I knew was a sign for me too, that things were very off. So I wasn't getting my period as well. So once I started getting my periods back, I knew that I was on the right track. A note that I want to say too, is that, you know, I see a lot of people having sort of similar um, situations to this and it's just going to take longer than you think. And I know that's so hard, but I being someone that would always look for the shortcut, diet pills, hello, it may take longer, but it's so worth it. And now the relationship that I have with my body is so much better. I am, it's hard to say I'm in love with my body. (laughs) but I want to, and I'm going to put that out in the world um, because I'm so thankful for it. And I'm so thankful for all of the work that it put in to um, partner with me to heal itself naturally through this process that I put it through when I wanted to be something I wasn't and when I wanted to make it something I wasn't and when I was just ignoring it and when I wasn't um, respecting it and when I wasn't paying attention to it and when I let other people dictate and tell my body what it should be doing what it should be like, what it should look like. And I wasn't actually educating myself or taking matters into my own hands. And I think that's the message that I would want to share You know, the most out of every single thing through this podcast, through um, the steps provided, through my story, um, through the vitamins and everything like that, that it is in your very best interest to educate yourself on your body and your health and what you're putting in your body and um, what you're putting on your body and the practices that you're doing that affect your body because that inherently affects your mind and it affects your soul. And this body is where your beautiful self is living for this time period in this world. And it is in your best interest to give it the best home possible. And um, I suggest getting your hormones tested, whether that's with uh, Candice of Your Hormone Balance, which we will have in the show notes, or it's with someone else, or it's um, reading about hormones, Alyssa Vitti of The Woman's Code, um, who we've also had on the podcast, has a great book and resources related to hormones. So I would suggest educating yourself there. Maybe checking out how you're feeling as it relates to your body and um, some of the symptoms that maybe I had or others had and kind of giving yourself that as a guide to maybe what could be going on. Maybe that's getting off birth control. I am no doctor. I hope you guys know. (laughs) I'm just an idiot with a mic. But I felt like that was a huge turning point for me. So if that's something that is interesting to you, I would suggest looking into it. Maybe it's getting the Paragard Copper IUD. Maybe it's doing pull and pray, a classic, a favorite. Maybe it's wearing condoms. Whatever it is, just figuring out the best method for you that's going to protect you, make you feel safe, um, and also make you feel like yourself. Do not put your personality, your emotions, who you are aside to um, concede to some notions that sex protection is all on you. Okay. So we've talked about a lot. We've talked about a little bit about my party days, a lot about my diet pill days, a lot about my puffy hormone days. We talked about my protocol. We talked about how long it was. We talked about that it is a great idea for you to educate yourself. And I'm here for you. If you ever have any questions, if you ever want me to um, be a listening ear, if you ever want me to be, um, you know, someone that I can give you advice, whatever it is, um, this is my personal experience um, in my life. And I just wanted to share it with you. Um, Of course, you know, take a little bit of it take all of it, whatever, take whatever it is you need. But I felt like it was my right and my responsibility to share this journey with me as a lot of you start to go through this educational process to learn more about your hormones yourself. And I hope that it provides the impetus for you to educate yourself and to learn your body and love your body even more. And I love you and I'm so grateful for you. I'm so grateful for Almost 30 Nation and I will see you on tour and I will see you in the secret Facebook group. You can connect with me at 100blog, H-U-N-D-R-E-D, blog on Instagram, and I can answer any DMs there. I love you. So good, sister. Thank you. Thank you for sharing that. Thank you. 
Hope that was okay. Appreciate your feedback on our solo episodes. Thank you guys so much for sharing these with your friends, uh, for starting the conversation and for being a part of our community. It means so much that you guys are here and part of the conversation with women all around the world about topics like this related to health, wellness, spirituality, what have you. Um, To continue the conversation, we have a Facebook group. So secret Facebook group on... Facebook. (laughs) And uh, you can join the chapter in your city. So there are chapters in each of your cities where women are meeting up and having great conversations. All right. Review of the week. Phenomenal. Five stars. Ah. Such such a beautiful space these ladies have given me to learn, love, and flourish in my own life with a variety of topics and guests they have. So educational and inspirational. I can't say enough good things. And I feel like I just gained two new friends from Coco. Thank you so much. And also thank you to everyone who contributed to our end of year video, our thanks video. It really meant a lot to us that you called into our hotline and just expressed how Almost 30 has impacted your life this year. And it brought us to uh, rivers and rivers of tears. So thank you Cried for days. so much. And also that hotline is live always. You know, you can call in if you'd like to recommend a topic. If you have something going on and you just want to vent, truly, we are here for you. Our hotline is one 272 1853 So 424-272-1853. We'd love to hear from you. Yeah. And then one of the first events that we have of 2019 is happening on February 9th with the lovely Alexandra Roxo. Um, She is one of my, um, the most inspirational women that I know. Uh, She is fierce. She is feminine. She is all about getting in your feelings, getting in your body, um, being who you truly are and, you know, exploring and living this life as a human. And we are so excited to do a Valentine's Day event with her at Sage Wellness. It's going to be a workshop. So it's going to be a little bit longer than our other events. um, And you're going to get a lot and lot out of it. So that is February 9th at Sage Wellness. And you can get tickets online on our website. Cannot wait. Almost30podcast.com. Thanks so much for listening. Thanks, guys. We love you. See you next week. 